Hello, creative, and welcome back to the Empowered Creatives podcast, finding confidence between hustle and burnout. I'm your host, Victoria Hines, creative career coach, helping creatives just like you navigate those career hurdles, whether it's finding that nine to five job that's going to light you up inside or really taking it up to the next level in your creative career. All right. I'm super excited about this topic today because it's something that really hit home for me um, back in, I would say about 2020, um, when I was going through my own journey, trying to redefine what work was for me. Um, this is definitely a, a secondary episode to my former Ikigai Finding Your Purpose episode. So definitely go check that one out um, if you're curious to learn more. But today we're going to talk about hobbies. So as both an entrepreneur and creative, I have this deep, deep desire to turn everything into an income stream. I'm definitely not the first person I've made met who's tried to do this. I've met many, many other entrepreneurs, creatives, artists who we all fall into this trap. And oftentimes it's because we have this thought process of we're good at this, right? We love doing this thing. We love making this thing. So why not make money from it? It makes a lot of logical sense. I mean, We've always been told, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, right? So of course, we'd like to take everything that we love, make it into work. So we're never going to work a day in our life, right? Except that doesn't really pan out the way we thought it was going to. Here's why. Work comes with stakes. Anytime you sit down to work, you are providing a service or a product in exchange for, in our world, money. And that adds a level of stakes to the situation. It's no longer just about fun, joy, exploration, creating, uh, just enjoying what you're doing. It becomes, there's pressure there. And just because you love something doesn't mean that it should be work for you you know, thinking back to some of my passions like theater and acting, I moved to Chicago back in what, 20, 2015. And I really wanted to make this my career. And I'm so glad I went after it. However, as the years went by and I slowly started realizing what this job essentially demanded of me and what I was going to get in return for my work, what the market was going to give me for my work, I just, the joy kind of fell out of it. It became very, very difficult. There were there were moments of great high, but there were also moments of great low. And it was hard for me to find that joy in this thing I once loved again. I feel the same way about baking. And actually, I've been very, very careful not to make the same mistakes. So I love baking. I'm super excited. Holidays coming up. Uh, my grandmother, when she was around, she had this incredible sugar cookie recipe. And she's probably one of the first people in my life who taught me really how to bake. And I've been up leveling my skills ever since then, but I'm excited to bake her cookies. I bake them every holiday season and baking for me has brought me so much joy. It's what I did during the pandemic. I started making ice cream. I started experimenting with flavors. I made croissants uh, from scratch. I pounded the butter. Um, I really, truly love just getting into the kitchen and getting my hands dirty or coming up with new th- ideas. But the second I think about opening a bakery and doing this day in and day out and having to make and make and make and make and, make and provide this product to somebody who wants to purchase it, I feel drained. I feel completely exhausted. And that to me is a sign that This is not something, baking is not something that I should be monetizing. Now that could change and I'm open to that changing, but for right now, it's, it's my love. It's my passion. It's my hobby. So something that's so difficult about the word hobby is it comes with just this big negative connotation. I know for me, anytime you are saying like, I do this as a hobby. I do this for fun. I do this for joy. You suddenly get this look from other creatives and artists and makers that, oh, 
you're not a professional. Oh, you're not serious about this. You've failed, maybe. Sometimes that pops into my brain. Or you're not an artist, you're not a creator, you're not a musician, a baker, a publisher, a maker, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. And here's what I actually believe, because I think we need to rewrite this a little bit. You can be a serious artist and still have hobbies. It does not mean you failed. In fact, it's going to probably lead to so much more success for you because you have creative outlets that are not tied to an outcome. It might actually, in fact, be exactly what you need to take your professional work to the next level is a hobby. So this episode, I'm going to share with you four reasons why hobbies are your best friends as a creative. Finding that right balance in your career is incredibly difficult as a creative. If you are lacking time, energy, or money to do the thing that you love, it might be time to figure out what needs to change. If you have no idea where to start, I encourage you to grab my free creative career audit. This worksheet will walk you through a process to help you identify what's bringing you joy in your work and what really needs to go. You can head to my website at www.victoriahines.com or grab the direct link in the show notes below. Alrighty, back to the show. We all need hobbies. We all need activities and creative projects that are going to expand inspire us and lead to play and lead to fun. So let's dive into the four reasons why hobbies are your best friend as a creative. Number one, process matters way more than progress in a hobby. Think about it this way. Um, I'll go back to the baking analogy. The process of me doing the work matters more than the product itself. If I mess something up. If the recipe doesn't go as planned, great. I can chuck it. I could start over. There's no timeline. There's no deadline except for the deadlines I put on myself. Just showing up and creating is the goal. It's about having fun. And there's no deliverables to turn into anyone, which is incredibly, incredibly freeing. The second reason we should all have hobbies as creatives is hobbies are pure fun and joy. I've said it multiple times on this episode so far, but they are 100% joy, which means you get to do what you want when you want. Sky's the limit here. Working 24-7, working 18-hour days is not healthy for us. If everything, every creative project becomes monetized, suddenly... There's nothing that you can just dive into that just gets to freely fill you up with joy. It gives you very little space and time to just be you. Creativity is a way to connect back to you, a way to inspire you, a way to re-energize you, a way to refill you up. So this is why hobbies are important is because they bring fun and joy. Reason number three. Hobbies can help you tap back into beginner's mindset. Now, this is very similar to the fun and joy um, aspect, but it also, the beginner's mindset is something so powerful. And if you didn't listen to the episode with Dr. Aaron Baker, um, all about joy, that's a really great one to go back and listen to. But the beginner's mindset is a way to be curious again a way to be open to new ideas, to new discoveries, a way to explore, a way to tap back into your six-year-old self who's on the playground and just wants to try something new. With the beginner's mindset, you have the freedom to make mistakes and it doesn't matter. You don't have to take yourself so seriously and it gives you permission to not be perfect. The fourth reason we all need hobbies is because it gives you the chance to explore what could be your career tomorrow. Now, this seems a little antithetical to everything I've been saying on this podcast, but think of it this way. Our career paths are not linear. They're a sort of a tangled web that we weave in the words of Shakespeare. And it can be very difficult oftentimes discovering what you want to lean into next. Now, hobbies can be a very, very great way to re-tap into that passion, that joy, that figuring out what do I love? What are my skill sets? 
and they can be a really good indicator or marker of what should become your career. Next, the only thing to keep in mind and the only thing you have to watch out for is if one of your hobbies does become something that you monetize, a new hobby needs to fill the gap. So creative, here's your one thing this week. I want you to make a list of all the things you love to do, A to Z. What do you love? What do you love to do? What are the activities? What do you love to create? What do you love to explore? This could be tangible. This could be a service. This could be going out into the world, whatever it may be. Now, I want you to highlight or circle which of these passions need to stay a hobby. For your own mental sanity, your health, and your joy. All right, creative. If you've been enjoying this podcast, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. It's the number one way you can support me um, and the empowered creatives and the incredible guests that come on this show. And until next week, stay creative. Stay creative.